Welcome back to Station Ears, and it's time for part two of our automated arc furnace build. Yes, time to get this complete, or at least uh, try to get it complete. We'll see. I've got a plan, and that plan may not work, and it may not be the cunning plan that uh, you might expect. Uh, not even as cunning as a fox. In any case, um, let's go down there. <laughs> we can go down there. We've got an elevator. Yes, I can just drop to the floor. Stop spoiling my fun. Just because there's holes in the ceiling right now. So, yeah, I can obviously drop down. But, yeah, this is quite nice. And you can have further layers down, surrounded by rock or whatever. Uh, pretty good. And uh, hopefully you're going to use that as well. The elevator lock, very, very happy with it. Also very, very happy if you didn't see the last episode with mouse mode. We can now drag stuff around. Can we even drag the... Uh, can we drag the, the window? No, unfortunately not. Oh, well. <laughs> I can't have everything. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to lay out some electronics. Let me first explain what I want to do. Each arc furnace has an import slot and an export slot. The import slot is the thing you jam ore into to get it to work. So uh, if you just go look over here, that's the import slot. And we can basically see whether it's occupied using a slot reader. Now, if you were watching season one, you used to be able to do it. And until, until last week's episode, uh, last sorry, a couple of days episode, uh, you used to have to use a, um, a regular reader. But now there's a separate slot reader just for reading slots. Fair enough. And there's also an export slot. That's this, this thing. Now, when we put ore into the front of this, the import slot goes to one. When stuff's about to come out, but only for a moment, the export slot goes to one. So the naive approach to this, and to keep it as simple as possible, at least this is what we should start with trying before we have to put something uh, extra into place here, is check whether each of these has an import slot, uh, is, is occupied. The import slot is, has something in it. And then we're going to sum them using a new sort of uh, electronics. We're going to come back to that in a second. So this will be three at the moment, because that that I just probably ejected the ore down there somewhere. In fact, yeah, there's just a hole. Oh, uh, yeah, there's, there's a, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I may have been doing some experiments. In any case, there's lots of ore down there. All right, so at the moment it will be three. So then all we should do is say, if it's above zero, then act they use something like um, a batch writer to write the activate property on all of the furnaces. So if any of them has anything in their input slot, try to activate all of them. That's the simplest way I can think of doing it. Now, it may not work. We may need more complexity. The reason why is that if the input slots are above zero and they're always above zero, let's say this goes in and then it starts to activate, but the next one's already fit, you know, it's already ready to go in we may have a problem whereby it doesn't change the value, uh, you know, the value above zero, whether it might be three or two or one. If that happens, it won't activate the next set of ores. That'll be the symptoms if we get this problem. If we don't, fair enough, no problem. Um, the main thing I think there is that the logic writer, or the, rather the batch writer, only really writes, i.e. triggers the activate button on them all, when the value changes that it's looking at. So if that doesn't change, we may be in for a bit more trouble. The way you solve that, and this is what I did in the first se season, is that you then have, well, in our case, now we have to have slot readers, but you have to have two slot readers for each furnace, one checking the import, one checking the export. Because what will happen, whenever something comes out of the other side of the furnace, it's going to trigger the export slot. Just for a second or so, it'll go from zero to one. That'll flicker the value upwards. So depending on what we set up to check that value, we should necessarily then trigger the activate button and around it'll go. <laughs> That's the hope. All right, so uh, let me get some steel sheets. And uh, how much left do I have left in my... Um, oh, I've still got plenty left in the welding torch because I've been quite frugal with it. We do actually need a, a separate um, uh, gas mix for the, for the welding torch just to make it a little bit better. So let's just weld up the ceiling a little bit, just to block form, just so that we can uh, construct electronics on it. Well, I say complete it. S ever so slight delay, which always catches me out. There we go. And there. 
And I don't want to say there as well. We're going to have to go down there for all that all before I close everything up. But I'll just leave that one space there. In fact, if we just go and head over there now, turn off my building torch for a second. I can just grab all of this stuff. Just jam it in my backpack as well. And then get the welding torch out and then we should be able to just seal this up. So even if we do dump ores, it will stay up there instead of coming down here. Yeah, we do need to fill this in with with frames. So that's the other thing. But other than that, it's uh, it's pretty straightforward down here now. OK, with that one exception there. So let's turn that off, put it back in our tool belt. The uh, slight downside, by the way, of having these multiple packs open like this um, is uh, that you can, well, now you can scroll through them, which is sort of a feature, but sort of slightly annoying <laughs> as it was, because now you've got to remember to close them all or scroll through a much longer list. But I digress. Let's get on with the um, the electronics. So let me just uh, put that down here. We don't need those for now. So what we can do is we can just use this beam here. And I think I want us to try and align these to where the furnaces are, just so that I know what I'm doing. So I'm not going to make this anywhere near as compact as I normally would. Let's just uh, get rid of you. And I'm just going to grab the uh, screwdriver. Well, the drill. There we go. We'll place the other electronics later. So let's say we have slot readers. And we'll rotate them so the electronics, the, the power connections on this side. Okay, so we've got one. We've got two, we've got three, and then there's going to be a fourth one right there. OK, so let's say they are looking at the import slots. So we're going to need to then sum them. So if we have a look at what we can do here, um, let's just, oops, that's a batch reader. So if we flip that, well, actually, we can just put it here. Yeah, because that's right in the middle of all the furnaces. OK. And then, just for argument's sake, I'm just going to put the batch writer right here. OK, so that's quite symmetric. It's quite nicely laid out. I'm just going to go and put down the um, the cables now. I'm not going to do that on camera because it'll just annoy everyone. <laughs> just because there's a lot, a lot of cables to lay out. So let me just uh, cut forward save some of this cables and uh, actually don't want to clean up there now or can we just run a cable off that I think we'll just run a cable off that there sorry I will I will stop using your time up doing cabling for this second but I just want to make sure that we have this one okay so then we can build off that okay and run it that way one second Okay, with the electronics labeled out, well, sorry, laid out, I should say, labeling is coming next. Uh, we just need to get this furnace oven out. So we're we'll goodbye to this little room. We'll have to deconstruct it later. We may well use some of the parts again. It's not really much of an issue. And we're going to put the furnace in here. So uh, I have to rotate it that way. Yep. And now it's set up like all the other furnaces. Good. So we're going to need the relabeler. And that is going to come oh, this whole thing. We have to scroll through things again. I should just use the mouse control now that I've been wanting it for so long. So Arc Furnace. So let's just call it Arc Furnace 1. So that'll just make it easier just to uh, to relabel these two. Uh, three. And four. There we go. And we're going to do the same thing down here with the slot readers. Slot readers are going to be on the network, so we need the screwdriver. Um, oh, I actually needed one more bit of cable there, didn't I? I always forget one bit of cable. There we go, and we'll have to just uh, cut that piece out. And replace it with a junction. There we go. I think they're all connected otherwise. They all look it now. Yep, that looks fine. Good. So, um, back to the screwdriver. Now we're going to be able to choose whatever we want. So that's going to be Arc Furnace 4. That's going to be Arc Furnace 3. Ignore that. Arc Furnace 
2 and arc furnace 1. There we go. The slot, we're going to choose the import slot. We can go through only two, really. <laughs> so import slot. And uh, we can choose what happens there. So whether it's occupied, what kind of things in it, which is what the occupant hash is. It's just an integer, but that's what the kind of things that are in it. Quantity, damage, class. We want occupied in all cases. So we shall just turn that on. You're not occupied. We're going to say import occupied import occupied import occupied I need to turn them all on of course so you're occupied so are you and so are you all right now we have a batch reader and we can say um, interesting batch we want all the arc furnaces, don't we? Yeah, we want all the arc furnaces. We'll turn this on. And currently average is zero. That seems a little odd. Because how is the average of one, 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 and zero, zero? So it must be rounding down for that. Let's have a look at uh, sum. No. Uh, in fact, oh no, it's not the arc furnace, is it? No, I'm being stupid. It's the uh, the slot readers we want to... There we go. Um, you really should be showing a value other than... <laughs> other than that. Maybe I have to change it. No? Uh, oh, I have to read a property on them. Okay. Uh, setting, maybe? Yeah, that looks right. It's the setting. Okay, so slot reader setting, we want the maximum. That's one. We may be able to use that actually as um, just the direct input to this. Instead of comparing it above zero, uh, what's the maximum? So, which means if any of them are one, it's going to be one, which is exactly what we want. So, we'll probably use that. Average is at, ah, good, it's a floating point value. That's interesting. Sum is three. Minimum is zero. Fair enough, let's use the maximum. And then let's configure the batch writer to have, um, yeah, I've, not, I've not put this, I've not connected this one either. <sighs> right, you're coming out, and you're coming out. Yes, they're gonna complain. And that's gonna have to go back to a four-way junction. And then to a corner. There we go. All right, are you, are you now all connected? Please all be connected. So input is going to be our batch reader. OK, and let's turn you on. We're going to read the, um, in fact, no, we want to, we were reading the, yeah, reading the batch reader. Why, because I'm not selected on the output yet, maybe? So that's one of the arc furnaces. Yeah, and there we go. One. Arc furnace. And then we're going to choose the activate state. Now, if this works and it doesn't immediately drain all the power out of the system, then we're golden. <laughs> Otherwise, we may have to do something with a bit more complexity. Activate. That sounded like they turned on. Ooh, interesting. Now, you see the problem? This has got something ready, but isn't turning on. Okay, so what it may well do is just catch up. And that's what I'm hoping for, because even then I don't care enough about having to have it all burned immediately for me to do anything more than this. <laughs> However, it's worthwhile giving it a go. And uh, what has it got in there that's taking that long? It's probably got like a full stack of copper or something. Uh, oh, there it goes. Yeah, this is what I was afraid of. You see, now everything is still there. But, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, this has got a problem. Now, um, oh, uh, we do actually have a, a bunch of copper here now. 14, 1 and 1. 
So what we're probably going to want to do is put a stacker at the end of this or something along those lines. Maybe, although the fact this mining belt comes out of here as well, well, we probably have to put a sorter and then another stacker to restack everything from the, the, the various furnaces or just leave it. Um, you know, we can also put a manual stacker just to, to basically combine stuff. And even um, one of these machines will actually act as a stacker. If you put stuff in it uh, and then pull the handle, it'll just eject everything. So not quite sure what we're going to do with the output just yet. But um, yeah, for example, um, let's turn you off again. Uh, too long a list. Yeah, so we can just shove the stack, the, the you know stuff in here. It's not real problems. So we need to solve that problem. What can we do? Well, what I think we can do is try to watch all, if possible, all of the export slots. And again, if the maximum of that goes to one of all of them, then we can combine that with. Uh, this value, I think this value, yes, this value, combine both of those together and write on that because it's going to flicker, I think. When it does flicker, it may well reactivate everything. So let me go and get some more chips and let's see if we can do that. Okay, I think I fixed it, apart from this one furnace which is broken. There's actually some kind of in game bug. Don't know what it is. Don't know how it got this way, but this is furnace is on and it's it's staying on. <laughs> it doesn't matter what's happening. Oh no, wait, it's gone off finally. Oh, thank God for that. Okay, so they're all empty and we've got I'm gonna have to put a stacker here, and I think I'm gonna have to <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to disconnect that duct, that, that chute, and put the mining belt somewhere else so that we can guarantee that it's only <laughs> it's only copper coming out of well, so it's only uh, ingots coming out of here. Let me show you how I've fixed it. Well, how I've I've resolved the problem. Um, what I wanted to do as well is just issue a challenge to all of you. Can you do it in less? That means either less power, or it means less chips. It, they should equate to the same thing, but it just depends if you decide to use another piece of equipment. Let me show you what I did. So I did two more chips. So right now we've got. Let's give you the minimum what you've got to work with. Five, six, seven, eight chips. Eight chips to control four furnaces. So two chips per furnace seems pretty efficient to me. Anyway, so we've got our original set of five there. So four slot readers and the thing that combines them. Okay, the maximum. So is anything occupied is what they're saying. Then what we've got another is a second batch reader and that is reading the arc furnaces directly, not, not this, this kind of batch reader in the way. It's reading the arc furnaces, activate setting. And it's reading the minimum. Right now, the minimum activated is zero. None of them are on. This is, of course, still reading the, uh, well, in fact, no, now it's reading the logic math. So let's just go back one. This is reading which ones are activated. This one's a reading which one have got stuff in them. Right back right now, they're both zero. This is just adding them, adding both of those things together. So what's then going to happen is this writer is looking at this math unit now. It's looking at the the addition of whether things are the minimum activated and the maximum sort of setting, which is just basically is anything occupied and are things activate activated. Looking at the minimum. And by combining the two, what's going to happen is, as each furnace finishes, it's going to deactivate. And when that happens, it should tr it should trigger the next run of stuff. So if I just grab, oh, this is going to create so much copper. <laughs> uh, if I just grab, uh, let's say you and you, let's give this a go. All right, so let's just drop it in here and then run like heck. And are you going to reactivate again? Uh, why are you not making? Oh, yeah, you have made it through. Just took a little while. So all four of them on. They should deactivate and reactivate in a second or so. Shouldn't take very long for it to do one copper each or whatever. Uh, unless it's bugged them all. I don't think it will have, though. It may have. 
in which case that's sort of awful and maybe to do with pushing the activate oh no wait hang on did one of them complete no they did complete that's fine you just can't see them very well when they actually do so there we go so we get yet yeah, more copper there we go a block of 10 copper coming out of the end um uh, i didn't put seven in so did i i think i didn't put seven in or nine something like that in any case these work and that's what i'm happy about which is good this is episode done i think um, if you can improve it, do let me know. The traditional approach would be, again, to check both the import and export slot on each furnace, and then write well, not, whether either of those has set been uh, changed to one. So that means two slot readers, two writers. So that's four per furnace. Currently, this is two per furnace, although uh, I think that the savings will be amplified the more furnaces you've got. Because for each for the each further furnace, all you need is one more slot reader. So if we only had two furnaces going, we'd probably be... Uh, so two furnaces would need one, two, three, four, five, six. So two furnaces would need three chips. Four furnaces need two chips each, and then from then point onwards, it's just one chip per extra furnace. I quite like that. That's quite, quite, uh, quite a nice uh, approach. See what you think. Now, I am going to build an enclosure for these, but um, I don't think I need to actually record doing that as such. I'm just going to put some plating down on the floor, just this great stuff, grating stuff. And once we have that, I think I'm just going to surround all of this, uh, just to a height of one or maybe two, with uh, walls. In fact, I'm probably going to move this entire thing. And then we'll feed the pipe at the back and back around with an active vent or something like that back around into this system next thought i had was and then we'll maybe do this next episode is if we do that then why don't we disconnect this pipe from our input to our atmospherics and run it around the back over here and we could put it into this room that we have here now not mixing gases at all because uh, i've got the system off at the moment just to save battery while i'm recording not to mix gases, but to, if we put them up there somewhere, you know, on that block, um, to basically add heat to this. Now, we've got to be careful with doing that, because if we do that trivially, what's going to happen is it will add heat to this room until this room gets hotter than it, and then it will add, add heat back to the pipe, because remember that the, the radiators are two-way, the heat will exchange perfectly well both ways, so we can't just add them on the inside of the room without controls what we may have to do is do something along the lines of say if the inside of the room is um i don't know five degrees less than the pipe something like that they shut off the pipe because it's approaching equilibrium and if we're going to do that then what we may have to do is deal with removing that gas somehow uh, or having it stored because what's going to happen is every time we use the furnaces it's going to bring that the heat of that gas back up which should then reopen the valve to let the heat into the uh, into the room again until they reach a new equilibrium. That let us use the heat of the gas to uh, to heat that room. The one thing and the other thing that I want your feedback on is well, what should we do with the gas when it's not heating the room? Because that's also one input to our atmospheric system. So if we if we're using it to heat this room as a secondary source of heat, well, when do we actually get rid of it? And maybe why do we get rid of it? Hmm, interesting thoughts. would love to hear your comments on that. It certainly is a more efficient way of dealing with it than doing this. And of course, I've been out of way at getting gold. So um, <laughs> I can now build some more heavy coal, which will let me run this new spine of power from our batteries. However, having said that, there's nothing we should do more when building a system like this than actually finding a good test. Um, what's, what are you? Your six stacks of ore. So I've been out mining. I come back to my base and decide to, to call the elevator. It eventually arrives. <laughs> I want a faster elevator that, that causes motion sickness. But we head downstairs. Pull out our mining belt. And indeed, we probably have multiple mining belts in our backpack. Drop it in there. And just walk away again. 
let's uh, head back upstairs. In fact, what we can do is just put an input up here somewhere, just by a bin that we just enter into the system. And our arc furnaces are perfectly happy there. It's feeding us back with our mining belt and our many, many mining belts in this case. Let's just drop that and I'll get my toolbar back. And now our furnaces should be happily uh, producing iron. They should get split into individual stacks, I think. They're not going to go down to ones. And this is why I don't necessarily need stackers, as long as I remember to insert belts, not ore, into the system. Then you may get full stacks out or whatever's in, you know, whatever slots are in your belt. So that should be pretty good. Now, this is working at the moment. It's probably a huge power drain on our batteries. That's four arc furnaces going, but we've got four batteries going. So that, that'll be fine for the moment. And I should see some iron pop out here shortly. Oh, there's it. there it is. Yep, so we're getting full stacks of iron just popping out of this system. <laughs> oh, that's so much nicer. Uh, and of course, uh, what we may well see is two of those deactivate and the other two carry on because we should end up with six stacks of iron. Unless it even further uh, subdivides things, but I don't, I'm not sure whether it will or not. We'll see shortly anyway. Uh, one other thing I wanted, wanted to say, last episode I said that was a vending machine and I didn't have enough gold for it. I still don't really because I still want them for the heavy coil. Uh, but the vending machine, I did say there was going to be either 100 items or 100 slots. And if it was 100 items, I'd be very disappointed. And if it was 100 slots, I'd be amazed and very happy. Uh, someone clarified on the patch note that 100 slots. So that means it's a super locker. So this, this locker is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 slots. So it's three and, you know, a three and a bit locker, a three and a third lockers in size. More importantly, you can request stuff from it programmatically using computers, buttons, and other such things. So if you wanted to order stuff from, from the rest of your base, you might be able to press a button, and out of a nearby chute would just pop your item. No need for hunting through various lockers, and what you may well need to have to deal with is somehow having multiple vending machines. In any case, ooh, lots of, lots of iron. Mm-mm-mm, I like this, although they're still full lit. Not sure why that's happening. I only put six stacks in, I've got four stacks already. Uh, did you actually just low balance the last two stacks? I don't think you did. I think just two maybe just falsely activated at the moment. There is still sort of buggy things going on with these. In any case, that means I can now seal up the floor. And uh, let's grab you. There we go, floor sealed. And of course, I'll put a, a shoot up here off camera or something like that. And we can just put some floor gratings back. Uh, there we go. So that is pretty much that build. And uh, that's pretty much it for this episode. If you've liked this episode, feel free to like, subscribe, share with other people, or, just as importantly, improve on it. Show me something better. I'm more than happy to see it. Otherwise, we'll see you next episode for some more Stationeers, and we'll see what I can build on top of this. But it's been a pretty good one this episode. As always, guys, thanks for watching.